Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are one week away from FIFA 22 Ultimate Team getting to start our foot clubs for the very first time. And that brings us a very big question. How to start your FIFA 22 Ultimate Team? What is the best way to get your club off the ground and running from starting at ground zero like everybody else does and progressing towards getting those cards like Ronaldo, Messi, Mbappe, Neymar that everybody wants to get in this Game. So we're going to take a look at a lot of step-by-step -step tips today on how to start your ultimate team the first time when you get in to your club. But we have some interesting things to talk about related to that. It's where are you going to get into your ultimate team first? Are you going to get into your ultimate team first on the web app? Or is EA Play going to be available before the web app is released? Usually, web app is first, right? So we prepare for web app and then we prepare for the EA 10-hour trial, right? This year, the 22nd of September, one week from today, it is supposedly happening that both EA Play 10-hour trial and the web app will be available on the same day. That is actually very similar to how Xbox guys had it in FIFA 19, which is how it worked for myself because I was on Xbox back then. But the interesting thing with that is you're gonna have people that will be getting onto the game and playing games right away with the EA Play 10 hour trial, not just people only on the web app. You'll have people on the game and on the web app. So that changes how we look through and think about some of the things that we start to do as we get onto FIFA 22 for the first time. Now also, as we take a look right now, we don't have a pitch notes article just yet. We do not have a pitch notes article talking about some of the more, um, you know, the things that are gonna be coming at the start of FIFA 22. We had one of those last year in FIFA 21. I expect that to probably come out this Friday. This Friday was when I would expect some pitch notes and some more information about FIFA 22 related the early access period and you know ones to watch information when they're going to be dropping the companion app and the web app those specific dates so I would keep a close eye out for those but let's get into it right let's say you're accessing your FIFA 22 ultimate team for the very first time now my recommendation would be do all of this on the web app. If you have EA Play and you're doing the 10 hour trial, save your hours for gameplay because that is what you should reserve those hours for. Do all of this stuff, all of your back end work, trading, investing, doing SPCs, opening packs, do all of that until you get onto the full version of the game. Do all of that on the web app. So I'm gonna talk about a lot of the web app today because that is where a lot of you guys should be maneuvering inside of the start of your ultimate team. So, of course, this is the FIFA 21 web app, but I'll be using it for FIFA 22 purposes today. So, number one, make sure that you're logging into the right account when you try to go into the web app, right? Make sure that you're signing into your FIFA account, the one that you played with last year. Now, if you're starting a brand new account, you might not have access just yet. So that is something you have to kind of be wary of. Also, if you're somebody who was banned in FIFA 21, your access might be reset. You might actually be able to get on and use the market uh, on FIFA 22 because your ban would be quote unquote reset, if you will. So that's one thing to think about. And also the day the web app drops, whenever it is, I mean, every, every hour of that day, people are trying to refresh, the servers go in and out, it's hard to get onto the web app when they're first rolling it out. So just keep refreshing, right? For that first time you log in, keep refreshing, keep trying. And when you get in, you guys obviously know where you need to go first, right? With the web app, it's all about efficiency. When you first get in, you're going to be going here, you're going to see your starter pack, and I'm actually going to scroll in on this so you can see it a little bit better. You're going to choose your starter pack nation, right? This is a screenshot from the beta, I think. Don't ban me, eSports. Anyways, um, you're going to want to choose. Of course, you can't really go wrong with either of these top nine nations, but I love France, love Portugal, love Netherlands, love Brazil, love England. I think those are some of the best. Germany's pretty good too. You honestly can't go wrong. Basically, what you want to do is pick a good nation that you can complete some of the SPCs later on down the line. The starter and some of the advanced SBCs down the line is what you'll be looking to complete with this starter pack choice. So I'm gonna choose probably Brazil, Portugal, or Netherlands, or France, but you really can't go wrong with any of those big nations because that's gonna help you get some fodder and get some cards to do SBCs. But then after that, 
you're gonna go right to the store. Basically, it's a mad dash to get to the store because if you've played FIFA last year or multiple years before, you were going to have welcome back packs, which is basically EA saying, hey, voice crack, thanks for playing our game. We're gonna give you some packs to help you get started. Usually they're just like 12.5K packs, like players packs or 7.5Ks. They're really not that big of packs, but you'll get a few of them, right? And it gives you an opportunity to get your club off the ground a little bit easier. Of course, as of right now, you can't buy FIFA points on the web app. So if you have FIFA points transferred over, I guess technically you could maybe, uh, actually no, it's false. You can't actually open your FIFA points until you get onto the console version, I think because the transfer has to happen on FIFA 22, if I'm thinking of that correctly. But um, open up your welcome backpacks. That's the big thing, right? You get in here, you open up your welcome backpacks, boom, 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 you open up those. And what you're gonna wanna do is get coins. You're gonna sell most everything because if you don't sell anything, then you'll have cards in your club, you'll have consumables in your club that yes, you could use when you start playing the game. But if the web app comes out before EA Play does, nobody's playing games. There's no demand for consumables and chemistry styles and stuff like that, or at least not very much. Most of the demand is for people just selling cards and trying to go do advanced SBCs and get at, do SBCs to get packs to try to get more coins and pack bigger players, right? But that's why you go open your welcome backpacks first because that gives you some players to sell or to put into an SBC and then to get a pack out of that. So I would definitely take the coins on just about everything that you pack. Now I'm gonna even open a pack right now just so you can see this is, what is this? Wow, nice, Calvin Phillips, 94 rated, GG's. Um, this is of course right now when there's still special cards that are in packs, but I would go through here, probably compare price. Of course, right at the beginning of the game, there's not gonna be very many of these cards on the market. They're gonna be very rare. So make sure that you list accordingly, right? Undercut a little bit if you have to, but also recognize that somebody like this Akinviv probably isn't very popular for SBCs at the start. Don't really undercut him too much. You might actually have to quick sell some of these non-rare players just to get some coins in order to do SBCs or to continue on with your club. A guy like Savernier, you might want to list him up. Kaleida Carr, you would definitely want to list him up because League One, some decent links, right? Uh, maybe with his nation, not so much, but definitely Savernier, you'd either want to keep him or list him up. And then the rest of these, you might even just quick sell because they're probably not going to have much demand. Maybe Morales because he's Argentinian. And then from there, you're going to open up the rest of your welcome backpacks and see how many coins you have after that, right? That's kind of the gist of things. You're gonna open up your welcome backpacks right away, and then you're gonna sell stuff. Keep keep very minimal, keep very, very minimal. If I would have chosen France for my uh, welcome back pack, I would definitely keep Savernier. I would hold on to him because that might help me out with an SBC in like the next step or two. But open those packs. Um, one quick tip with this as well, like let's say this was an inform, a team of the week one, if it's a card that is like discard value right away because people are opening their welcome backpacks, it's getting packed, but you're like, man, this card is probably going to go up in the next week. One great thing with quick sell recovery in FIFA 22, if it stays the same as FIFA 21, is that you will be able to quick sell an inform card. Let's say this Calvin Phillips quick sells 10K, say it's an inform. Quick sell it for 10K. You're like, why in the world would you do that? You get 10,000 coins right then and there. From there, you would have seven days to go back into your quick sell recovery to pay the 10,000 coins that you quick sold them for to get him back. And a lot of times what you see is if it's a meta card, a popular card that you pack, you could quick sell that item. His price is gonna rise up sometime in those next seven days. As long as you have enough coins to buy him back at his quick sell value, you can then buy that card back and sell him on the market for more so that's kind of like a 500 iq play right there you can even do it with an icon right icons discard for like what 50 60k if you packed an icon that is probably going to be very cheap right away as people are not on the game yet you could quick sell it in that first hour of the web app and then come back and buy it back a little bit later and then boom sell it for maybe two three hundred thousand coins depending on where that icon is at and what icon it is so just something that seems crazy but something to think about as you get onto the web app that very first time. Now also, if you pack any cards in here, I'm thinking of some of the brand new transfers that we've seen um, in FIFA 22. 
lower rated cards that are very hyped for starter teams. I'm talking about Pepe, huge pace boost. Pepe, center back, Portugal, Liga Nos, right? That Pepe, he's not on this list right now. And some of the other lower tier, like even as Mateus Cunha, if this guy's like 5, 6K right off the start, get him out. Take the coins on the really, really low rated cards that are like starter team is specialty, right? Vertonghen is, is another one. Grimaldo is another one that a lot of people are looking to put into their starter teams. Those are going to be the players people are going after right away. They're going to have the most demand. Um, so I would look to get those out decently soon because those are going to be pretty cheap, maybe like three, four, five thousand 5,000 coins, and they're only going to go down afterwards. So that is my opinion and what to do with your welcome back packs. Basically, just get to the store, open those packs, and get some coins so that you can go and do other SBCs. Also, a quick tip, if there are preview packs, if there are preview packs inside of FIFA 22, now we don't have any information yet when I'm recording this, but if they have preview packs there, 100% preview every single pack that you can. See if you pack anything that sells, uh, compare prices on all the cards that are inside of it, then make the decision of when you want, if you want to buy the pack or not. But... That will be something we probably learn a little bit more about is the preview packs coming up in those pitch notes that I mentioned that have not yet come out. So next thing, let's say you've opened up your preview packs. What the heck do you do next, right? You've got some coins. Maybe you've got about 30K, which is behind my face cam, but I've got 30K right now. What would I do from here? I would go to the foundations tab. I would get the let's get started SBC done so that you can do more SBCs. I would skip over League and Nation basics and go straight for hybrid leagues and hybrid nations because these two SBCs right here will cost you about, you know, 25 to 30,000 coins or less a piece to do right out the gate. And you get some really, really, really nice packs from these SPCs. Let me take a look at hybrid nations, right? You can take a look at this SPC. Every single squad inside of it is pretty cheap. It's about 27,000 coins to do the whole entire set. Of course, right now, some of these are showing as uh, um, 30K and stuff like that. I believe that you have to have some um, loyalty for some of these. These hybrid nations and hybrid league SPCs have been the exact same for every single year they've been released. They have never changed the requirements. So you can even ahead of time, before you get into the web app, basically go ahead, look at these SPCs and say, man, how could I get these done? Or even have a game plan for yourself for when you get into that web app for the very first time so that you know what kind of players you need, if you need loyalty, if you don't, how much chemistry you need and stuff like that. So that's a big tip as well. But get on these SPCs right away because the faster you get on them, the faster you're going to get coins. And it's basically, it's not guaranteed profit, but you're almost guaranteed profit from the gold players pack prime gold players pack a 50k pack for the around the world sbc even if you're paying 20,000 coins for this sbc alone you're gonna make your money off of it in the early stages right away at the start of the game when so many 79 80 81 and 82 rated cards sell for like 10,000 coins 20,000 coins because they're just rare they're met up and they're overpowered and that is why the beginning of the game is the best time to open packs and we're going to talk about that with fever points in another video but that's 100 percent what i would do there so you've opened your packs you've done the advanced sbcs what do you do next now it is time to grind the market you're going to be trading but what are you going to trade with two things number one you just did these sbcs everybody else is doing the same sbcs you just did the same players that you might have had to buy to complete those squads other people are having to buy those as well Take a look on Footbin where you just found your cheapest solution to do the SBC. Take a note of some of those cards that are in that SBC. People will have to buy some of these cards from these solutions that show on Footbin. And these are the cards that you're going to see fluctuating up and down in price as these cards get bought up because it is shown as the cheapest solution. Let me tell you a secret, boys. Every single time you see a cheapest solution, this says it's the cheapest one on Footbin. It's not because everybody else is looking at it and they're buying the same cards. It's making those cards go up. In reality, the cheaper solutions are down here towards the bottom and they're going to end up, uh, their prices are going to drop because more people are buying these cards up here. These SPC solutions that are down at the bottom are going to work their way back to the top. It's just a constant ebb and flow. So you find a lot of non-rare golds like I just packed in that earlier pack. Maybe a card like this, Savernier would be somebody with good links, good nation, 
for these SBCs, this guy might go from like 700, 800 coins up to 1.5K every hour or every hour to two hours. You might see fluctuations on a lot of Portugal, Dutch, Brazil, French, English players that are needed for those SBCs. Strikers, right wings, left wings, depends on the formation for the squad 100%. But that is where I would look to trade because you know a lot of people are just going to do those same SBCs that you just did. So if you know people are doing these SBCs, that's where the demand is and you need to find where that demand is so that you can trade in and out of that when supply comes. You can snipe, you can bid, find undercuts. Basically, just think about the cards that you bought and look through some of these SBC solutions. See what people, see what cards people are buying and trade with them because they will move up and down on the market in those early stages. Now, the second thing you can trade with is again, those meta meta players because of course right away at the start of the game people are going to be packing cards let's take a look at this 83 Kempembe for example right that's a card that's not very very cheap but he's probably going to be very cheap right on he's a card that would probably 100 percent be cheapest in that first couple hours of the web app period and then continue to rise up later on because that's a card people will buy as a center back as they get more coins, right? People like to upgrade their attackers first, then to their center backs. Or maybe somebody like, uh, let's see, who's another good example? Kyle Walker would be a great example. A little bit more expensive. Um, Llorente would be a great example. A lot of your mid-tier cards are going to continue to rise up in price and you can trade with that. You can buy Kempembe for maybe 30,000 coins at, you know, an hour after the web app has been released, he might be 40K next hour. You're like, okay, this card still might go to 60K in two days, but I'm going to sell it right now, take my profit and go buy other stuff and trade with that, right? It's all about the quick flips. Quick flips is FIFA, man. I'm telling you, that's the way it is going to be. Unless you're buying fodder and waiting for EH to release an SBC, the quick flip trading is 100% the way to go. And of course, since we have EA Access or EA Play dropping on the same day as the web app supposed release, there's going to be a lot of coins because people are going to be opening FIFA points as well. So some of your middle to high tier players are just going to take off in price even faster than they have in years past because people that have EA Play, they're going to be loading up FIFA points and getting on FIFA 22 and loading up and opening packs at that time. So that hopefully isn't a too long summarization, but hopefully information filled packed and helps you as you're starting to form your FIFA 22 ultimate team and think about how it might look for you. Hopefully those tips are very, very helpful. Again, number one thing I would do, get on the app very fast, get your starter pack, make sure it's a good nation, rip those welcome backpacks, get coins, do the SBCs. And then from there, that's when you start grinding. That's when you start the trades. So that is the video for today, boys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. Been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.